Welcome to this PenPot tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be exploring the interface and looking at the basic drawing tools in PenPot. This is the dashboard when we first log in. We can create new projects. We can manage the team that we're a part of if we want to be part of a team. We can just work on something on our own though. Over here, click on Drafts, and we can create a new file. And then we can modify this file by clicking on these dots if we want to, but let's just dive right in. We'll double click, and this takes us into the drawing portion of this file. So notice we have some different panels. We have on the right hand side a panel with some different tabs. On the left hand side we have a panel with different tabs and then we have this toolbar. If we hover over these tools it'll tell us the name of the tool and by default the tool that we're in is the move tool. This just lets us select objects and move around the canvas. But if we hover over notice there's two that look kind of like a square. We have the board tool and also the rectangle tool and we're going to ignore this board tool just for this video. We'll touch on it in the next video. But if we click on the rectangle tool, we left click and then we left click and hold, we can draw a rectangle. Same thing with the ellipse tool, left click and then left click and hold and we draw an ellipse and a rectangle. And when they're selected, notice it has this green box around it. And if we hover over our icon changes, we can left click and hold and change the size of the X and Y. Or if we click on the circle in the corner, we can change the size of X and Y at the same time, the height and width. As we're doing that, you might notice over here in this design panel, the size is changing and the position. If we left click and hold anywhere on the object and drag it around with the mouse, the position will change also. If we hover over to the outside, our icon changes again and we can left click and hold and rotate. And the rotation is also shown over here. We can type in a rotation like 30 degrees and hit enter and it will change to a 30 degree rotation. We can also hover over this and click in and use our mouse scroll wheel to change the rotation and also to change the size of one portion or change the position. We can change the color. So right now, if we left click outside, we, don't, we lose all these options to rotate and change the position. But if we click on the object and we come down, we see this fill color. And this is gonna be similar to an Inkscape or other vector programs where we can change the fill color which is the inside color of our object. We can also add a stroke. So if we left click and come down underneath fill as stroke, hit this plus sign and we can add a stroke. So right now we have a black stroke of one pixel. It's really hard to see. We could zoom in by pressing the plus key on our keyboard and we can see there's a stroke right there. We can also scroll in and out with our scroll wheel while holding the control key on the keyboard to scroll in and out. And up here in the top, it shows that we're at 101% right now. So we can go um, zoom to fit all, or we can do the plus and minus here to zoom in and out as well. So a couple different options. And for panning around the canvas, we can hold down the scroll wheel on the mouse to pan around. We can also click these handles and move just like you would in any other application. But getting back to the stroke, if we click on our object, we have the option to change the stroke. If we click off again, Nothing is selected, we can't change stroke, we can't change color. So whichever one we're clicked on, we can adjust the properties for that object. So the stroke, we can change the size by typing it in, just like we did on the size and position. We can change the size of the stroke if we do 55 and hit enter. Now we have a thick stroke on here. Change the color, we can click here, we can give this a different color. If we come down here to the bottom, we can change the hue of this color. And this is similar to any other color picker. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. We have a transparency. We can do gradients. We'll talk more about gradients in uh, future videos. Uh, but for now, if we want to get rid of our stroke, we can come down here and do the minus. Get rid of our fill, we could do minus, but then it'll be completely invisible, so I'm not going to do that. If I want to undo it, I can do Control-Z on the keyboard to undo any change. Uh, we also have a menu. If we right-click, we can copy, cut, paste, this bring forward and back is kind of useful. If we bring an object on top of another one and we want the blue one to be on top, we can right click on the blue one and go bring forward. And so it brings it forward. Uh, we can also accomplish that over here. So notice we have our rectangle and our ellipse. Um, if we want to change, whichever one is higher up on this list is seen first or on top. So we can left click and drag this ellipse on top and now it appears on top of this rectangle. Let's do some text. We can click on the text tool and click over here and we can type in something. Uh, and then if we change the size now, we have to click out of it to have the size apply. But we're size 14. 
which is 14 pixels high. And we can come down here, make it bigger to 48. We can choose what the actual font is. And PanFont comes with a bunch of, a lot of Google fonts. They're, you know, pretty common and popular and easily accessible. Also, they have really open licensing, so you can use them for commercial use. We have different options for the text down here, just like you would expect to find in any text editor. Something interesting to note, you can also give the text a fill. If we make this a bold, a really bold text, we can change the fill color of our text. And we can also give our text a stroke, just like we did with the object. So we click over here to stroke. We can give it a fill and a stroke, just like we would uh, anything else. And then the stroke size again. So those are the basic drawing tools. Uh, I'm not gonna spend too much time on these, but there's also a few more we can draw freehand with this curve tool. I rarely use this. And we can do with a path tool, create a vector path. So if we left click, then left click again, we can create any custom shape. If we left click and hold, we can create a curved shape and then closing it off uh, and hitting the enter key. Now we can change and give it a fill and make it just like we would any other custom uh, object. Uh, there's also comments that we'll talk about in the future. But for now, go ahead and play with all of those different uh, options. And then in the next video, we'll talk about boards and actually doing some uh, UI and UX design. So thanks for watching. Leave your questions and comments below if you have any, and I'll catch you in the next video.